Over the weekend, I had a hangout with a person who described himself as a traditionalist. He's a Catholic, so he's religious. He said he's a conservative, but he doesn't really like the word conservative, so that doesn't properly describe him. Anyway, so we had a hangout, and I guess I was talking to him for, like, the conservative perspective. Because I have to say, I've spent all my time talking to like, new atheist types, people who worship Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens, and believe in the idea of a regressive, which is progressive, but with just rare put on the front, so it's regressive. And I've spent quite a lot of time doing hangouts with people like that, and talking about how much I love Islam, because I'm not willing to say that basically all Muslims are evil. <laughs> and that might sound like a straw man, but I have talked to people who legitimately believe that. And it, it becomes kind of noise, because the moment you say anything vaguely positive about Muslims in any way, shape, or form, they call you a regressive and basically say, you're a bad dude. So I've, I've had a lot of debates with people who kind of think like that, and I don't have to think very much when I have debates like that. Their points are not about substantive things. They're basically just built on the idea that Islam is terrible, which, I mean, I sort of agree that the ideas behind Islam are wrong. Yeah, sure. And that due to that, we should just have this rabid hatred of all things Muslim, which I think is kind of counterproductive, and I don't know what that has to do with ISIS and extremists, etc. But that makes me like a horrible, regressive person. When I talk to people who have that point of view, I legitimately don't have to think very much, and I can debate them quite easily, because I don't think they have a very good understanding of history and the world. They're just, a lot of the things they say are based off emotions and feelings. So when I was talking to this conservative Catholic, I think I went into it thinking, well, this is going to be real easy too, because it's going to be a whole bunch of shitty talking points. But I've got to say, this person legitimately made me think quite hard, because these were difficult questions that we discussed about real world issues. And then I suddenly realized, holy shit, the Catholic conservative is the guy who's making me think. He's the person who has points that it's difficult for me to counter. Not these atheist types. These new atheist types do not have really thoughtful points that you have to think hard about refuting. But I legitimately didn't know how to answer some of the questions that this guy had and some of the points he had to say about my point of view. So to be honest, I didn't do a very good job. I mean, I didn't prepare and I didn't have very good answers for the things that he said. I still don't know the answers to some of the things he said. So I thought I would ask you, my subscribers, what do you think the answers to these questions are? Because they're difficult questions that are not easily solved. It's not black and white. It's not people rambling on about Muslims and then you can just say you're being unreasonable because they are and then you don't actually get to the deeper points where you think about the morality of things. It's not like that. These are actually legitimately difficult questions. I'm not going to mirror the hangout. I guess you could say because I did a bad job. Not Sargon of a card bad at debating somebody. But I had to think on my feet and there was a few times where I had a brain fart. The first thing that I found difficult to answer was we were having a conversation about guns and the Second Amendment. He was talking about how a rice cooker was used to make a bomb during the Boston bombing. And if you can use a rice cooker to make a bomb, why don't you ban rice cookers? On its surface that seems like an inane question because guns are designed to kill people and that was my answer. Guns are used to kill not just people, but animals and everything. And he said, yeah, they want to use them for hunting, etc. A rice cooker is used to make rice. And he basically responded with, so you can make rice with it, but you can also make bombs with it. So why don't we ban all materials with which you can make bombs? I've seen this put forth by people like Steven Crowder, and I've seen it thrown out there as some just shallow talking point, but I've never encountered it in an actual substantive conversation when we're actually thinking about how things can be used for violence. I mean, you could cook the rice on the stove, but then again, you could use the hot water on the stove to burn someone to death. So especially everything can be used as a weapon. So is the point that guns can only be used as weapons? Because that was my argument against that. But when I thought about it, I was like, that doesn't seem very compelling of a point because they are solely used as weapons. That is still the same answer that I would give, that guns were designed for killing and nothing else. But at the same time, it's true that you can make insane weapons and bombs and stuff, like fertilizer and a fucking van. So the question for my subscribers would be, what is it about guns 
that means that they should be illegal versus other materials which you can make weapons out of. Is it just the purpose for which they were designed? Is that the reason? And I'm legitimately wondering. The second thing we talked about, and this is probably the most confusing one, was abortion. So we talked about abortion, and I said I'm for abortion, which I am, and he said abortion is murder. Now, I am not for late-term abortion, so at points in the conversation it seemed like he was trying to get me to defend the idea of late-term abortion, but I don't agree with late-term abortion, so I couldn't defend it. But it became a philosophical discussion about why it's not murder. Basically, my point of view on that was, it's kind of like a pile of goo, a fetus. It's not developed. But he said it's not fully developed yet, but it is a human, so it's murder to kill it. And then I said, no, it's just the potential of a human. It's the roadmap for a human, and I think the difference would be this roadmap is going to turn out to be a human, and then this other roadmap is going to turn out to be like a pig, or a cat, or some other animal, and it could be an animal that we're okay with killing and eating, like a chicken, whereas this one is going to keep developing until it becomes a human. But then he asked, well, would you kill a baby then? And I really thought about this, and I was like, you know, when you really think about it, there's nothing useful about a baby. <laughs> I'm not condoning killing babies, I'm just saying, you know, what's the justification for keeping a baby around? A baby is not properly developed either. So I think the justification for keeping a baby around is the same thing. It's, it's in the future, it's going to have some potential. It's going to have a point. And there's also some kind of biological imperative to keep humans alive. Because that keeps the species going. But an actual baby has no fucking use. It's just a whiny, complainy little shitbag that cries and you have to give it food and shit. It's got no purpose. But one day, it's going to be a human. And when we can finally empathize with it, then it matters. And then we worry about killing it. A three-month-old kid in your belly is not a fucking human being, okay? It's a bunch of little congregate of cells. You're not a human till you're in my phone book. <laughs> there, my hat is now in the political ring. So my point of view was, basically a fetus is a bunch of goo. And I think it is a bunch of goo, but at the same time, Bunches of goo can feel things and can have emotions. It's developing a brain. Is it different than killing a baby? Because a baby's fucking useless too. I don't fucking know. I actually don't know the answer to that. So I thought it was about the morality of abortion, whether there is a morality to abortion, or whether it's just straight up evil murder. And I don't know the answer to that. I think it's probably not murder. But at the same time, I think if it's not murder, us killing all those animals is not murder, and then some vegans and vegetarians would disagree, because they'd be like, well, we're massacring all of the fucking chickens, you know? Every single day, and all the pigs. What's the difference between killing a pig and a baby? It's just like, the baby's a human, and the pig's a fucking pig. I don't have the answer to this shit. I just know that it's the practicality of abortion is important, because if we don't have it, it leads to a whole lot of other fucked up things. Babies that aren't wanted, but he said... People want to adopt these babies, there's enough people to adopt the babies. And I tell you man, I just don't know the fucking answer, so that's my question for you. I want my subscribers to answer for me why abortion is justified, why it is good that we have abortion, and what the negative consequences would be if we didn't have it. Maybe I need to read a fucking book, or just look up the Wikipedia page. The third question leads on from that, we were talking about birth control. And I was saying how the pill is awesome. And I think it is awesome. It's an amazing invention because it allows people to have sex and express themselves sexually. Which is another thing that I said in the Hangout. But he said, well, no, but the pill led to the sexual revolution in the 60s. And that led to lots of people having sex. And then that led to the decline of the black family. And it led to the decline of all of the people in the world today. And if we hadn't had the pill... Nothing bad would have ever happened in terms of that because we just have a lovely nuclear family and then... I didn't agree with some of that because I think black people were not having a great time prior to 1960s anyways. It's not like they lost something really great for them. But he disagreed with that too. And there's a lot of things that I don't know. So that's another thing that I want to ask about. Did the pill lead to the sexual revolution, and did the sexual revolution destroy the nuclear family, which is what has led to how fucked up uh, black communities are today. What's your answer for that? And don't give me a bunch of racist bullshit. Because I'll be pissed off if like, the anti-BLM people get on there. 
talking about how it's black culture's fault. Shut the fuck up about that. Just answer my question. Did the pill lead to the sexual revolution? Destroy the negro family? Lots of annoying hand movements. Number four was, what is the difference between progressives and liberals? As far as I'm concerned, progressivism is basically a practical point of view, and it's about what is going to help the world. That's the way that we think about things as progressives. What's effective when we approach the Muslim world? Is it demonizing Muslims and invading countries? No, it's actually like having a dialogue, listening, doing your fucking best. You might not be happy because you want to be an edgelord. You know, these are the reasons that progressives take stances that piss people off sometimes, because they're trying to be practical. That is actually the reason. That's the real reason behind progressivism. It's not because they're just trying to apologize for extremists or something. No, it's they're trying to be practical. And you might disagree with that, but a lot of the disagreements with progressive points of view, as far as I'm concerned, are emotional. They're not grounded in reality. Progressives care about what's going to help people. Maybe a guaranteed basic income would help people. You know, raising taxes would help people. What the fuck is going to help people? Giving them access to birth control will help them. A progressive tax rate, that will help them. But this conservative had a very good retort to that, and he was like, but what if those ideas don't work? For example, Obamacare, which didn't really work as well as it should have, and then I countered with, but that was a conservative idea because it was from a think tank and then he said well you know but a conservative th think tank doesn't represent all conservatives a and but so then i tried to push him for a real conservative solution and he didn't have one and i said they should have had single payer and he said that was a pipe dream and it was never going to happen so that's the thing what is progressivism because if we can't agree on what is practical then we can't agree with what is progressive like what's going to lead to progress and i think that is a problem People online espouse a lot of things which are not productive and they're not going to help mankind. That's why I reject them as a progressive. Because I think what's practical, what's going to help, that's the only fucking thing that actually matters, is what's going to progress mankind. But with a conservative, they have a different point of view about what will progress mankind. Ironically, by conserving and... Sometimes that means going backwards. They think that's going to progress mankind or help mankind. And I think going forwards is going to help mankind. But what if we can't agree on the solutions? Then what's progressive? And what is the difference between progressive and liberal? I want some help with that. And then the last question, because five is a beautiful Steve Shivesian number. How is feminism good for the world now? I've been asked that question so many times by douchebags who don't actually give a fuck. They don't care what the answer is, it's just a fucking talking point. They don't care about what feminism has done, they just want to destroy feminism. But I felt like this conservative asked me in a legitimate fashion, what is so great about modern feminism? And we talked about video games and like strategic butt covering and college campuses and all that kind of shit, whatever. I legitimately want to ask, what is modern feminism all about? I, that's just what I want to ask. That's what I want to know. I'm not asking that in a negative, judging way that's trying to make feminism look bad. If we just forget about all the achievements in the past of feminism, of which there are many, got women the vote, achieved all kinds of things, and intersectionality I think has been brilliant because it brought oppressed women into the fold, and it's been a really positive influence on the world. Just today, right now, what is feminism doing? What's it achieving? And I have to ask that because in this debate with this Catholic conservative, he made me actually think about these things. And it's weird because, you know, no amount of anti-feminists and new atheists have had any power to make me think because the only thing they care about is owning you or destroying you or finding some way of making you look bad, you know? And this guy didn't care about that. He didn't care about trying to make me look bad. He was just really wondering what the answers were to these and when he asked me some of these questions i thought this is difficult i haven't been made to think about these things this much because the people that i debate with are not thoughtful people because some of the people i debated in the past were not thoughtful people so they didn't make me think it was just a game but here i can see conservatives you know as much as they've been demonized as much problems there have been especially with the radical conservatives in the world, they are still involved in the debate about the real issues. The real issues being wars, you know, taxes, society, 
abortion, all these kinds of things, they're not involved in the fantastical debate about whether all Muslims are evil or whether Muhammad was a pedophile. All the shit that fucking heresites talk about. You know, the, the atheists are the ones that are out of touch. They are the ones that are losing their grip on reality. They are just talking about talking points and fantastical things. And I talk to a Catholic conservative and he makes me think a lot more than any of you fuckers have. And it's ridiculous. Atheists have got to pick up their game. They've got to pick up their reasoning abilities. They've got to actually fucking think about the world. Because apparently a conservative who's a Catholic is more reasonable than you people. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the problem here. Besides that, you should check out his channel. He's called The Distributist. He was talking to me for a while about having a hangout, but I fobbed him off because, you know, big news now because I did a hangout with Bering and uh, I also talked to Steve Shives. So, I mean, you know, it's no big deal, but I'm kind of like really important now. But then I was like, I deigned to, you know, grace him with my presence. And there you go. You can check out the hangout and I'm sorry that I wasn't that coherent in it, but please answer my questions and I will provide a little summary in the description box, which is down there the books.